good close up. All I did was take a base tube, rotate it down, you know, put new holes here. Of course, it has a cable inside in case this all broke. I, I recabled it and. Uh, now he's red light, red light blinking. It's recording. Okay. And it should pick up this Bluetooth set automatically. Can you tell? Uh, it's recording. Yeah, I see the Bluetooth side. GPS side blinking. I think the Bluetooth is on because uh, I saw the Bluetooth. Uh, Bluetooth uh, is on. Yeah, it looks like it's It should be. It should be. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, well, we've got sunshine on launch. And we have this wind. So, things that are new. This space tube has been rotated downwards. So I've lowered my center of mass four inches. To give myself good roll control. I'll be testing that today. Also, this new configuration of the fly bar is an, it's, it's forward another four inches in the last one. So we're going to see what kind of a top speed I can reach. Also, um, I want to see, we know I can land on my feet. <laughs> we know this thing lands, it doesn't provide any obstacles to flaring, but if I stay in the seat prone position and land on my wheels, um, how's that going to go? I've already tested with the nose on the ground. This bar is not going to, if it does whack, this bar is not going to come down and crush my legs. It leaves a good five inches between the ground and this bar. So I shouldn't end up a legless pilot. But uh, I want to try landing on my wheels and just see how it feels. And there's uh, should be very little wind. It's, we're getting a little trickle in here at launch. But those are the three things I hope to test today. Okay. This is a really good stretch of sunshine. I'm going to give it a little time to heat. Yeah. Okay, well, you want to go ahead, you should be getting into your glider, man, if you want to. Okay. Oh, that's looking good. Now that's it's coming straight in now. Oh, wow, we actually have a cycle. Well, it's sucking over to your direction. I bet there's a thermal off on that south side. Yeah, it's actually crossing from my right right now. It is a cycle. I can tell right off the bat.
small rally here. This is the family, no problem. This is really Rob. Rob Jones. He's a ripper right there. Look it. Oh yeah, baby. Oh my god. Use the language, I'm excited. We never... Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Going up. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> I am recording. I'm doing a voiceover. Um, reason is that uh, a Motorola Buds Bluetooth mic is really breaking up. Now you see, hooked down on launch. Rick is, has still not taken off. Um, you might, some of you, uh, Thermal pilots out there might wonder, well, Jim, you had the core. How come you re reversed your role, lost the core, and now I'm struggling in zero? Um, well, this is a test flight. Um, yeah, I had the core. I was I was on my way to cloud base. Uh, I, I was a thousand over launch. My hands were getting cold, and my thoughts shifted to the testing. Um, Again, uh, at this point, uh, the roll control, the increased roll control is uh, readily apparent to myself. It's uh, quite obvious. Uh, actually, that's what caused me to be right after launch. You notice I got really, really still and a little bit nervous. Uh, as, as my harness loaded up on launch, I was, yeah, I, I was a little off to the right. And as soon as that glider loaded up, I, it, I went into an immediate uh, turn. 
And so I said, he says, okay, steady boy. And um, then of course, when I got my foot in the stirrup, everything's cool. Um, and uh, boy, I, I <clears throat> this is, uh, the thermals are ratty. Um, and uh, you'll see me get tossed around quite a bit. This, uh, the venison fly bar with the uh, increased roll control with the lowered base tube is handling it effortlessly. My shoulder's not sore. I can look around, spot the clouds. But right now, I'm thinking through my first test, I'm thinking like, okay, here it goes. I, I want to try it for speed. I want to break 50. And I did. 53. Now notice that the bottom of my harness is catching on the base tube. I felt that. And I was wondering if that was going to happen. I was pretty sure it was. So I'm I'm let I'm being really I'm taking it very easy. You notice when I let my weight when I let my let the bar back out, I went really gentle. I thought, oh, okay. Don't wanna cause not exactly sure what kind of problems that could create, but I want if it was going to create a problem, I wanted it to create the problem slowly, <laughs> not quickly. But, uh, so thinking through, okay. Oh, I'm talking about how hey, I could drink a beer up here. Hey. I could smoke a doobie. <laughs> oh, getting rocked around. Uh, this was March 16th, 2017. This was actually the first thermal, real thermal, I've been able to work since I've created the fly bar. And so the fact that it was so effortless and I could core the thermals so easily was uh this is great an unexpected bonus i thought this flight was just going to be another test flight and it, from this point out it is it's a test flight and and here looks like i'm flying right through some really good lift and i should have been cranking it up but i'm again i'm oh i know what i'm doing you know at this point in the flight there was a raven on my uh circling with me that that's uh, that's where the yeah so i was watching the raven fly around with me and he of course skied me out as i flew into sync <laughs> okay we see rick rick down below he's off launch i always keep an eye on my flying partner and make sure he gets off safely and uh rick also caught this good lift and made it it up it took a while but he's a real good pilot really really felt lucky when i realized we didn't really plan on flying together i i showed up and there he was he already had a flight in this morning and and um so this worked out great here's another pull in and again my bag is catching on the base tube again i exceed 50 miles an hour and i'm going okay <clears throat> i can tell i've caught so this is not the right harness for this type of flying. Now that I can see there was, this was never an issue with the uh, earlier fly bar prototype. See, I, I'm, I'm touching it. Yep. You can tell it's a problem. I mean, it's not, it hasn't really created a problem, but it makes it a little jerky when you try to uh, let the bar back out. So, uh, what I need is one of those really sleek pod paragliding harnesses. Probably not with an airbag underneath. Here we go for another test. Speed test. And again, we break 50 quite easily. It's pretty much a thermic day. There's really no, hardly any wind on the lake. You notice when I did thermal up, there was hardly any drift. So these GPS readout speeds are fairly accurate. Uh, pretty still. Okay. 
And um, I was talking with Trish Kells uh, on Facebook, and I asked her, hey, if I succeed in breaking 50 miles an hour in the supron position, can I dedicate this to uh, her husband, Rob Kells, who passed away a few years ago, missed to this day and a uh, pioneer in Suprone flight. As a matter of fact, it was Rob's writings and enthusiasm for flying in the Suprone position that inspired me to even try doing this. And uh, I'll post her reply. She said, yeah, sure, go for it. And I, I, I really appreciate her giving me permission to dedicate this uh, breakthrough. Uh, now, see, I'm doing, <clears throat> I'm hitting 50 easily on an old Wheelswing Super Sport. Great glider, but definitely not a speed demon. Um, now, imagine if I was flying in a super slick pod harness with, uh, you know, laid back more <clears throat> on a T2. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have real speed potential in the Suprone position. And it's a combination of the uh, Fenison fly bar and taking the down, a regular speed bar. And I, 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 took an, I took an oversized speed bar so I could cut off the ends, drill new holes, recable it, and I rotated it downwards, as you can see. And now I'm getting everything's gone great so far no wind on the lake hardly at all and i'm right there where you i lifted up my hand i'm realizing as i come in for the approach it feels different i'm setting up my approach with all laid back and i'm not used to it uh, you know usually we rotate into the upright position and uh i get you i i am used to I have grown used to, to that upright perspective, and it, this does feel odd, and I do make a mistake. I actually, um, I fly right into a, I make one 362 mini, I think it's right about now, before I head downwind, and then I'm realizing right now, and now I'm, look, I just flew into some serious sink, 14 feet per second down, and I realize, oh my gosh, I got to get this thing down to the end of the field. I got to get this thing around. I'm keeping my speed up. I'm doing 40. Um, I'm coming around. I'm going, oh, this is going to be close. And now as I touch down, the air in that bag is deflating. And it was a total non-event. I'm, I'm laughing deliriously. Okay. Um, that's it. And... Uh, Hope you enjoyed it. And this, this entire thing is, uh, I, mean, I want to just say thank you, Rob Kells, for everything you've done for our sport. And uh, if, you're, if there's an afterlife and you're up there watching this, I hope you have a grin from ear to ear because you inspired me to do this. Thank you. Later.